right there right now we're just cruising these roads kind of looking at the tr some of the terrain features that cross the roads some of these saddles right now we're kind of in a little low spot on the road and and every time we get around these terrain features it's, it's like this everywhere we go there's a lot of tracks on the road up here and that's kind of tipping us off to where they're crossing so we're trying to figure out where the heaviest crossings are because this rain is about to wipe out all these tracks and so we're going to be able to come back in you know later this evening or tomorrow at some point and look at where all the new fresh tracks are we're getting a blank slate which is actually going to be extremely helpful for us because we're going to see where they're crossing like right now you know in between this rain and whenever we check these roads again <laughs> pushing through here I, I hope the deer are gonna move we actually checked out this road right before that storm came through and there was a lot of tracks on it there's a fresh scrape on it there's a food plot at the end of this field that we're wanting to go look at well that's a good sign <laughs> nice little doe man okay Holy smokes. I was about to say there's a rub right here that I can see. Um, I really wish we could just hunt this road bed. Hunting a, a good straightaway like this, man, there's nothing like it. But I was just saying, I was hoping this rain is gonna get deer moving. Obviously they're moving now. There she is. There's two of them. Man, she's lucky I didn't see her. I'd have popped her. She's close enough to the truck. She's 50 yards from the truck. I'd have shot her. Well, I guess that answers our question. They're definitely moving. So we're just going to cover some ground and uh, see if we see any more does, see if we bump into a buck, see what kind of buck sign we're seeing. So we ended up making a big loop and uh, we didn't really find any sign quite as good creek right here by this old tree stand so we're just gonna do it old school tonight and just sit on the ground up against some large trees and uh, kind of sit down low on this creek in this thermal hub thinking maybe something will come up come down out of this uh, fresh cut out of the hills coming down into the bottoms or maybe something will come up from the bottoms and go up into the hills tonight this reminds me of squirrel hunting when i was a little kid I can't tell you how many times I've been squirrel hunting just like this. Like either sitting in a chair, sitting on my butt, in a pair of blue jeans, and had just a big old buck walk up on me. And I mean, they really won't see you unless you move, as long as you're very still. I mean, this is really all the cover that you need in most situations. I'll try some grunts and just see what happens. But overall, good walk. I think we learned a lot. 40 yards, buck, small buck, right here. He's coming right at us, you see him? You see that twisted looking tree? Look right here, you see him now? Two and a half year old. 
these special windows. He's, he's walking right to our thermals. back at it this morning and again not trying to get overly aggressive on this place it's so low pressure that there's really no need to go blowing in here like we would on a normal WMA or something so we kind of let it get shooting light this morning and we're easing down towards a big thermal hub we've got high winds and so we're gonna try to just kind of somewhat get out of these winds these cedars do a pretty good job of stopping the wind but we think this train feature down here is just going to have a lot of deer funneling through it and it's looking promising already because again after that rain yesterday this road is a blank slate and there's a lot of fresh tracks crossing it. there's a big track right there crossing this road so there's definitely a lot of deer in this area so hopefully we're going to get right down in the middle of them and have them cross from different directions for us Matt shut, baby. Look at there. Look at that, dude. Got me a set of rattle and antlers now. <laughs> I'd shoot that deer. So we're down at this hub that I've been interested in going to and we're kind of overlooking it right now. Again, just really playing the wind. We got the wind kind of coming west right now, which is kind of what we need. Blown out across this fresh clear cut. And uh, I really want to get down in the hub, but the wind is just swirling so bad right now. I don't think we can, I think we'll do a lot of damage if we do that. And uh, so we're basically gonna hang out up here and see if these clouds will clear out because if that sun comes out on a day like today and really starts heating this ground up we'll get a strong updraft in our thermals and if that happens we'll be in really good shape uh, it'll be really hard for the deer to smell us so we're just gonna kind of hang out here where we can at least see into the hub before that happens and then when it happens we're gonna drop into it and fine-tune our setup a little bit more we can hopefully catch more travel from different directions.
I have killed a deer hanging from my lineman rope before. I was halfway through setting my platform when it walked out, and I did kill it. exactly what we were talking about before. He's just working right around this point. And he's working down to this next point in front of us over here. That's a good sign. Midday, cruising and grunting. Maybe his older brother will do it next. That was the biggest deer that I've ever shot at, for sure. That's the biggest deer I've ever seen in Alabama. And I screwed it up. We actually uh, were able to watch the deer. He actually hung out down there for quite a while and just kind of walked around. 
and I, I wasn't able to get any follow-up shots after that. Um, and then he finally ended up easing off, going up towards this big thermal hub. And uh, we went ahead and bailed out, came back to the truck, popped the SD card in the computer, and rewatched the footage frame by frame and zoomed in and everything. And uh, I straight up just whiffed on the first shot. I was I was trying to I was trying to shoot him while he was walking. I don't know why I didn't stop him. I got too fired up. It was the biggest deer I've ever shot at, and I just I messed it up. And uh, he um, he was unscathed by the first shot. And then he ran, and that second shot, he was kind of quartering away for me. Um, the camera was in a different tree, probably 15 yards away. I was 15 yards to the right. We were way up on a hill. And so he was, he was quartering pretty hard for me. And uh, that second shot hit him. And it looks like it was just kind of a grazing shot to the neck. Um, when we played back the footage, we were able to see exactly where that bullet actually hit him and uh, it's just right there very low on the neck almost all the way on the bottom of the neck uh, it's going to be below like any major artery like the jugular or whatever um, and there's it looks like there's just a little bit of blood coming out of it um, but not much and um, the deer just like i said stood there for a long time clearly didn't catch anything important so um, we're extremely confident that it was a a non-lethal hit which is, you know, not great because I don't like just wounding deer, obviously. So uh, that could have gone a lot better. But these things happen. So um, I guess we're going to regroup and figure out what we want to do um, for the morning. So what that buck was actually doing was uh, he was actually coming to check in a scrape down below that big thermal hub. and. I'm not really sure exactly where he came from because we didn't see him till he was all the way down in the bottom, but kind of a classic, I guess, scenario where this buck is coming down and he's at the lowest spot right there at dark and he's catching all those falling thermals and everything and he's got a thermal advantage. He stopped and he worked that scrape and then he was working upstream. So any thermals that are, the thermals that are dropping are, are falling downstream and he's walking upstream into those thermals with that wind in his face um, and then after after I shot him he turned and went back up towards that other thermal hub and did the exact same thing he got to the head of that big drainage where the thermal hubs up above him and he turned and he walked straight up again thermals in his face going up into that thermal hub so interesting that he was doing that I mean clearly a, just a super mature buck I mean just a tank of a body those are really nice deer um, so, I mean, it feels good that we figured it out and put ourselves in front of a deer like that. It's definitely a confidence booster as far as being able to find them, but man, I, I'm not going to sleep tonight. I mean, that was terrible. That was terrible. That's, this is one of those that I'm going to be thinking about like three years from now and I'm going to still be like nauseous about. So it is what it is. I decided to just come back to the same spot where I knocked the fur off that buck yesterday. Despite me shooting a couple times in here yesterday, I still think this is a good spot because it's a good terrain feature. It's good cover, and especially on a morning like this, it's 28 degrees. This is a south-facing hillside, and so I think deer are going to be coming to this. Um, it's a clear bluebird day, so when that sun comes out, it's going to heat up this hillside really quick. And this grass is good thermal cover. You know, if a deer's just wanting to get warm, he, he can come lay in this. Um, so I think it's going to hold a lot of does. And we're going to have really good thermal here. This is actually the, the only morning of the hunt where there's all, pretty much no wind, which is a nice break from uh, the really windy days. But also typically these calm days right after the cold front rolls through, that first calm day can be really good. Um, I've seen that personally, but I've also interviewed a lot of great hunters who've said the same thing, so we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll be the luckiest person ever and that deer will come walking back by and I can, <laughs> and I can get him. If that happens, I'm gonna drive to Georgia and buy some lottery tickets. <laughs> so, we'll see.
another deer right above them. Another doe, I think. Okay, here we go. Another one coming from the left. I can't tell what it is. He's got this doe just pinned against this creek and he's trying to defend her from all these other deer. I got I got a frontal shot. What? Holy crap, man. Oh. oh. That's 
not the same one I just saw a second ago. That's a big deer. <laughs> oh. oh no, man, I cannot believe that. I know. 748. Not even 8 a.m., baby. Oh uh, man, I took my time on that second shot, man. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. I God, oh, what's wrong with me? I got, well, I gotta get over that, dude. All right, so this is kind of an interesting trip. So Andrew just shot a really nice deer. So we did a gun swap. I wasn't really expecting to hunt this way unless Andrew killed something. Happened by stance or happenstance came and shot a deer so I had to climb out the tree go get his rifle and give him the camera so we have an opportunity to now kill another buck so this is pretty exciting I mean we've seen so many freaking bucks today uh, all ages come through so and it's early it's still only like well my watch is dead it's probably like right around 8 o'clock or so 8 30 so it's still super early. We still got a couple more hours to hunt before we gotta get out of here. Fingers crossed, maybe another four and a half year old or older deer will come slipping by. Yeah, I'm getting ready to shoot. Well, I'm going to get out open here. Walking behind that cover. He's going right up to us. Here we go. I'm going to stop him. Hold on. We tagged it. Feels pretty good. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Feels pretty good. Man. What a morning. Holy crap. He's a good one too. Dude, big body on too. Oh, that was so funny. I turned and I could see, I thought I heard something. And down here in this grass, I can see, kind of see down the side of this ridge. That I could see him coming. And when I first saw him, I saw his main beam and his body. I'm like, man, it looks like a big body deer. And uh, <laughs> that's so crazy. And uh, when I threw the binos up on him, I was like, Andrew, hey, freaking, you know, we got a buck coming. Saw him, and I'm like, dude, you know, looks like a pretty good one. I'm trying to hold out for my last tag, try to kill a good deer. And uh, he flips the bill. Big body on him. Looks like he's got tore up ear. And, uh, at first, I was about to rush the shot down here because I didn't know if he was going to, like, kind of keep coming down the side of the ridge or what. And he just kept coming and got to, like, 50 yards, maybe. And uh, I was actually kind of smiling while I was looking at him because <laughs> I was like, there ain't no way this is about to happen. And uh, finally stopped him right here. Over the shoulder shot. Hopefully the footage looks pretty good. And uh, got hit him with the first shot. He ran out, stopped again. Racked around, got a good shot on him for the second shot to put him down. So, it's been a lot of gunshots in this one little area the last couple days. Oh, I'm shaking now. But uh man, we got two we got two deer. We gotta get up out of this hellhole. 
Oh, I'm shaking. We got, we got work now. God, it's, it's crazy. I ain't gonna lie, it's freaking crazy. Never thought double two big mature bucks in the same spot, probably within an hour and a half of each other. So, because right now it's probably 8.30, 8.45, something like that. Yeah. D died right next to a freaking scrape. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Look at that. Look at that sucker. That's awesome. That is awesome, man. Oh, it's a big, let's see, eight point. You got a little kicker coming off the back. Dude. Yeah, that's awesome. Dude, this is, this is incredible. Two great deer, freaking trying to see where I hit them. First shot looks good. I don't know where that, hit him with that second shot. But, uh, what a hunt, dude. Holy crap, what a freaking hunt. So this deer, this buck, uh, which I think is a four-year-old, um, he was working down the side of this ditch right here behind us. I turned around and I heard something and you could see him coming through some of this tall grass, which is kind of behind the camera, kind of like what we were sitting in. And he was working down uh, that edge and the thermals, they're rising, but the wind is kind of cutting down. Like there's a, a very light breeze kind of cutting down the ditch. And uh, he was kind of working with that. Um, again, behind this doe that we saw this morning, this hot doe that was bred by that six point and everything else. I mean, just crazy amount of bucks we saw this morning. And he was just working down on a pretty good pace. And uh, thankfully, uh, he kind of came by about 50 yards. Extremely grateful. What a what a cool freaking hunt. Um, but also, we still got one more deer we got to go find. Now the work begins because we still got one more buck and we got to get them both back to the truck. So, oh, it's awesome. All right, there's the taxidermy bill, bud. Clean 10 point, clean five by five. Shoulders broke. <laughs> Look at that, man. Look at that freaking deer. Holy smokes. That's, uh, that's definitely my best deer ever right there. Alabama, black belt, public land. Golly, you can't ask for much better than that. Especially after the night I had last night. Just bad experience on a, on a big buck and then being able to come in here and get redemption. That, that's, uh, that's something, man. Uh, that goes to show, you know, when you have a hot doe like that, man, there's just like, you never know what might happen. I don't even know how many bucks we saw this morning. Uh, we had that, that doe come through early and she was clearly hot. We watched that other buck breed her and there was probably five different bucks on her that just kind of all over the place. There was a bunch of little bucks and there was two or three decent ones. One of them was a shooter. And, uh, and then after they left, more bucks kept coming through and coming through. And uh, I was kinda, that's what we were kind of figuring was gonna happen. It was just a bunch of bucks were gonna be kind of filtering through that area on that scent. And uh, thankfully this little joker did exactly that. I'd actually seen another buck right before he came out that looked similar. I mean, I guess it could have been him going back and forth on the hill, but it was another big frame deer like this. I didn't even have to put the binos up. I just saw him and I was like, that's a shooter. And, uh, and I lost him. I snort wheezed a couple times and grunted. And then, and then here came <laughs> this joker right here. But you can see why they're in here. There's just scrapes all up and down this bottom and on the ridge points and all throughout this thermal hub. There's just scrapes everywhere. And these bucks are down here running these scrape lines. Uh, they're not actually, you know, working a lot of the scrapes other than the one we saw last night, but they're, they're cruising in this bottom right here. I mean, it's clearly just an environment that's got a ton of does in it. And that's why they're in here. And you know, this time of year, it's just a matter of, you know, trusting the terrain. And I'm sticking with that theme from our last hunt. Trust the terrain and, and put time in in the stand. You never know what might happen. But I've been hunting for a deer like this for a long time, man. A long time. Feels good to finally get it done. Good way to wrap up the Alabama deer season. <laughs>